Hey yo, what's good? What's going on, everyone? Everywhere, welcome back to another video, man. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share the video out, all the other good stuff you do for everyone else. Do it for your boy as well. Now listen, man. Listen, your boy been grinding. I've been now do stuff with work and all the other stuff. I know, I know, I know. I made several videos already, man. They came out pretty bad or didn't want to go right. So look, we're not going to go with the excuse right now. We're going to hop into this build, man. This is Void Hunter Perfect. Everything Void Hunter does for you, it's just going to do this 10 times better, okay? That's, that's all I'm going to say. This is Void Perfected. Actually, we are in the Prismatic Hunter subclass. And boy, when I tell you, we got we got the role, man. We finally got one of the good roles. We finally got it, y'all. Those who don't know what I'm talking about, let me go ahead. Oh, oh my goodness. I know you see it. You see it. I see it. We see it together. Feel me? It's crazy. We got Spirit of Galanor and Spirit of Gur Falcon. Oh my goodness. That's pretty much two things that you wanted for Void Hunter. You want Gur Falcon to have the volatile rounds all over the map. All right. And you got Spirit of Galanor. This Orpheus rig. All right. Now, let, let's, let's just go ahead and get into the build, man. You see? Deadfall tether, okay? It's tether, it's gonna do tether things. All right. We got our gambler's dodge to get our melee back, triple jump, just cause I love it. Thread of spike, to me it's one of the best melees, man. I love thread of spike, it's so, so nice. Um, if you wanna do some weekend, you can still use some snare bomb or combination blow if you wanna sit here and, you know, pretty much dodge melee, dodge melee to your heart's content. But that's not gonna be the strong suit of this build per se, but it can still be a good variation. Now we are gonna run the dust fill grenade. I was experimenting with a magnetic grenade or even arc bolt grenade. Magnetic does do good damage, but if an enemy or enemies are within the dust fill grenade, it is just so, so good. And it does comparable damage if you do get uh, both shatters off from this dust fill grenade being on the field, okay? Plus, the dust filled grenade pairs beautifully well with the tether, kind of keeping everything in line and in your trap, per se, okay? You're kind of getting to the essence, the pure essence of really a hunter, of setting the traps, zoning off stuff, and just really taking control of the whole battlefield here, okay? <clears throat> now, you know, style of executioner is gonna be a must have for Void Hunter. This is the Void Aspect, all right? You, you already know what it does, okay? Elemental debuff, defeating any target with that kind of thing, gives you invisibility and true sight. Your melee attack will weaken, so that is good to know. But the other thing that we really want to use this for is just the invisibility, so we can get out of invisibility, get that volatile rounds, and kind of keep going. Now, because the dust field grenade, or really any of the grenades aren't necessarily the best, Arc Bowl with Jolt is nice, so keep that in mind. And Magnetic just does a a little chunk of damage but because we don't really have like the best grenades per se with this gunpowder gamble is going to be phenomenal just the sheer amount of overall utility of gunpowder gamble is just going to be second to none pretty much okay now let me go ahead and start up this onslaught in the background while we are still going over the build i go into the fragments or um, yeah, the fragments here. <laughs> now, we're pretty much pulling from all the best things of the different subclasses. Fossil protection is good to have nice damage distance, cover us at all times, pretty much. Okay. Um, Fossil Dawn is going to be very, very good, especially when the fact that we have 30 Spite, which is going to do so much good damage, sever them, make tangles, make us invisible because since it is severing, elemental debuff, as you see. And it's just going to pair beautifully well. Then we have, we're going to get Radiant off of this as well, which our Volatile Rounds plus our Weapon plus Radiant is just going to be insane. Now, we also are going to sit here and get Fossil of Hope just to get um, our Radiant to pretty much give us our Dodge right back, so to speak. Then we have Fossil of Courage. Our darkness debuff is going to be that sever that we get from our third spike and our <clears throat> arc solar or void, our void ability, gunpowder gamble, kind of does more damage because of it. 
and then it's also a ruin just uh, extra damage and burst size of our shatter from the dust field grenade there it's pretty much what we're running now in terms of weapons let me move over a little bit so I'm not leaving the team hanging mountaintop auto load and recombination is very very good we have our barrier bloodline which is key to this whole build because this one's going to allow you get the void subclass um, abilities and really transfer them over to the prismatic hunter now this is going to give us devour if we get multiple kills with it then once we have devour it's pretty much allows us to not only weaken on hit but also give us some more um health you know leeching or kind of that vampire at ask health um gain from just shooting this multiple times now this devour is not tied to just the the gun itself so i can go ahead and get devour with this gun for example right uh, let's see if i can so i got devour now you see the timer is still refreshing even though i am not using that very blind light anymore so this is pretty much infinite devour because we're going to be able to get mad stuff from just ever, all of our guns, abilities, anything. All of the hour is gonna keep just constantly procking and it's gonna be very nice, okay? Now to finish going over this pretty much, we have the very lead line that's gonna allow us to really take essence of the void and give us that volatile rounds onto this, which is very, very good. If you don't want to use Barry Bloodline for whatever reason, go ahead and throw in the Grab Down Lance. Also very good, you just want to devour. So that kind of healing aspect of this goes away. If you're not going to use Barry Bloodline, you're going to use Grab Down Lance, definitely come back in your fragments. You may want to go ahead and um, give up Foss of Hope and potentially even Foss of Courage for um, something more like uh, Fossil of Mending or your Fossil of Blessing just to get that extra little bit of healing that we're gonna need as a hunter. You, Everybody know we, bus hunters, we don't do well with that, okay? <clears throat> and then for actual armor mods, you can see we got on Harmonic Siphon for our kills with the Edge Transit and the Buried Bloodline. Um, hands on for all the melee kills that we should be getting here. Sorry, sorry, teammates. Try to make this real quick. Um, heavy ammo finder, we got heavy handy because we're gonna throw out a lot of those threaded spikes to pretty much keep stuff going. Resistances, depending on what you're doing. Absolution, because we're gonna get a couple orbs, you know, from these and our Reaper down here. Um, recuperation, just to make sure we're staying on top of that healing. And um, Harmonic Cypher, just uh, Scavenger, my apologies. Harmonic Scavenger, so we can keep our Barry Line Edge Transit up on weapon ammo. Powerful Attraction, Reaper, and Special Finisher, just so we always have uh, Bear Blood ammo, okay? Now let's go ahead, let's save the team. Let's go invisible. Oh, I didn't have all that. Just like that, team is safe, we're all good. That didn't blow up in my face because I was invisible. See how everything just pairs so beautifully well? Now this is build is definitely not dependent whatsoever all on the actual artifact um, itself. But I will say there's some things that are very, very nice to have in the artifact. Let me go get this turret. I'm gonna go get this one as well. Um, some of the artifact mods or perks, if you will, that you want to have. Unstoppable sidearm for the very blow, it's very, very good. Then coming over to Radiant Orbs, um, we can definitely get some like Void Hegemony. Galvanic Armors, very, very nice, I feel. Um, so it's kind of your pick. If you want, you can definitely do something even more so like this, <clears throat> and then kind of tap into that Void Abyss here by doing that. So the weekend that we apply with our Barrier Bloodline, it went from, I think, a 15% to 25%. Skull Crush is just absolutely, absolutely amazing. You recharge our melee faster and increase damage. It's gonna be very, very nice. Um, our grenade is gonna recharge faster that we have Radiant. So it's kind of that synergy right here. 
Uh, we have radiant from the orbs and the fact that we're using our melee in the first place. Still got damage resistance and we have a void overshield from all the weak enemies thanks to our barrier bloodline. This is really how you want to run your artifact uh, mod. It's going to be pretty much OP. There's almost no other reason to run anything else. Uh, maybe if I you know, actually use my stuff correctly. Do, do, do. Oh yeah, guys. This, this is absolutely amazing. This is a fantastic build. I already theorycrafted this build and many others a while ago. I was just kind of I'm about to say blow up already. <laughs> but no. I think I've this build and many others a while ago. I've been constantly waiting and at the mercy of the whole RNG at the moment, which has been absolutely horrible. So definitely bear with me. I got a lot more builds to come and a lot more builds coming soon because I did get a couple of the drops that I did want. So stay tuned in for that. But yeah, without further ado, please like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and all the other good stuff they do for everyone else, do for your boy as well. Peace and shalom, y'all. Oh, and I, I do want to say, if you didn't see already, 100 resilience, 100 discipline, 100 mobility, you want mobility instead of recovery, just because mobility will let you get your dodge back, which will allow you to get your melee off and all that recovery. Well, since we have devour, there's really no point of recovery, because we're going to be killing stuff anyway, so yeah. Peace and shalom. And for those of y'all that's still watching, I do want to showcase that a lot of the extra stuff, like the gunpowder gamble stuff, actually, because we're using Barry Brown, you see it's more of a, a single target kind of weapon. The Walls and Rounds does help make it more AoE based, but the gunpowder gamble gives us more help in the AoE 
um, ness of it all. As well as <coughs> the zoning off measures that we can do with this and helping us kind of fulfill that whole unstoppable champion role. Just like the tangles are helping quite a bit, the void overshields help them keep us alive. I should have finished them on that one. That would help that a lot. It was all good. We're already at, already at wave 10. Let's go ahead and take care of this boss. Just that simple and easy, man. Just that simple and easy. I could have really taken them out with Edge Transit. I just want to use more of the subclass. It's way more fun than uh, what's called Void Hunter ever was. Yeah, that's pretty much all y'all need to really see. Threat of Spike and everything else. And then HD was transcendent. So a lot of the Threat of Spike is going to help us get that, that dark meter up. Especially with the mountain top. going to help us out there. And uh, the grenade going to help us get that dark meter up. So we can stay on top of our transcendent. And our transcendent is definitely going to get buffed up. Because... Uh oh 